Encore of Revival, America, September 17, 2018. Trump's sanctions about elections are about the election. Turn all eyes to Texas. The seat of Senator Ted Cruz should not be in jeopardy. Democrats have no reason to dump such large amounts of money into a Texas race where senators are trending Republican, unless they are either crazy or they happen to know about other plans that could affect the vote. They aren't campaigning against Cruz because they think he is weak, but because he is so powerful. Without the additional sanctions on foreign interference, it would be much easier to meddle in your opponent's election by asking a foreign power to do the meddling. Americans know better than to meddle in American elections because they have nowhere to run. Offshore meddlers are another story. At least they were until Trump ordered his sanctions. This is a shot across the bow, not so much deterring foreign powers from meddling as much as making foreign powers and any domestic cooperative aware that the White House is aware that there are attempts to meddle. Only a fool would think Trump's order is purely for the optics of pleasing his unusually loyal base, which cares more about jobs and walls than diffusing accusations they have already decided are fraudulent. These sanctions from the White House could be what wins Cruz his second term. We'll see. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley lives in a unit in the famed Waldorf Astoria. She originally had the $135,000 a month unit occupied by Susan Rice during the Obama years. Rice had ordered $52,000 worth of drapes and motors to clean them, but the furnishings didn't arrive until Haley had insisted on moving to a less than half the price unit of the lavish Obama ambassador at only $58,000 per month. New York is an expensive place for everyone. But Haley also rejected the set of drapes. Of course, in New York news writing, Obama's bad decision must be blamed on Trump. It's all Trump's fault what Obama did. Senator Feinstein should be impeached and Judge Kavanaugh should be approved Monday rather than Thursday. After a long and, according to Democrats, interesting career in the White House, an uncorroborated claim from a supposed victim of a so-called assault, much less severe than anything Clinton was praised for by his base, came to Feinstein in July. The accuser didn't mention anything in all the other years of Kavanaugh's career. Nor did Feinstein mention the accusations in July or August. Everyone waited until the last possible minute. If it is true that Democrats don't mention important facts until time is almost up, they should be expelled from Washington. Many voters in the hashtag walkaway movement seem to agree. But this looks more like something made up. By doing this at such a late hour, Democrats have implied that there is nothing more meaningful to discuss. Democrats are still angry that they can't read all the private memorandum that other people wrote to other people which Kavanaugh was the confidential delivery boy for. So, they pull an Anita Hill-style accusation that looks fake in every time and manner they choose. The only credibility this accuser can gain at the bottom of this ninth inning would be for Feinstein to resign in disgrace for either trying to pull a fake September surprise or for exploiting a victim in doing so. Fat chance on a Democrat not exploiting the victims so desperately engineered into their voter base. Encore. Revival is returning to America.